Thanks to our sponsor, this episode of Crazy Fitness Got a Healthy Living Podcast was created using Podcastle. Podcastle is truly the easiest way to start your podcast. You can record remote interviews in studio quality sound. Editing is a breeze with a super intuitive and user friendly audio editor. You can take advantage of their powerful AI tools like Magic Dust to optimize audio levels and remove background noise with just one, with just a single click. And I also use this park, use podcast to automatically transcribe my episodes, which not only lets me share the final transcript with all of you, my listeners on different channels, but it even allows me to use their text editor to clean, to clean up my, any of the episode content I don't like, and I'll correspondingly edit the audio accordingly. Podcast is amazing, all in one platform to create your podcast or any audio and video content. Give it a try at podcastle.ai. That is podcastle.ai. Do you like Crazy Fitness Guy and want us to stay in business? Consider becoming a subscriber to Crazy Fitness Guy Premium Podcast. By becoming a premium podcast subscriber, you will be helping support our mission, which is to help educate people about autism and change their perspective so that they can look at it as a, a unique gift instead of a disease that needs to be cured. At Crazy Fitness Guy, there is only me, a.k.a. Jimmy Clare. I am what you call an indie podcaster, meaning there is no company backing Crazy Fitness Guy. So in other words, if I, so if I run out of money, there would be no more crazyfitnessguy.com. By becoming a premium podcast subscriber, you will get these exclusive benefits like ad-free content, so you do not have to listen to ads like this one anymore. Behind the scenes access, you will get sneak peek previews of upcoming shows, and you will get early access to episodes before it's released worldwide. Crazy Fitness Guys Premium Podcast has been featured over nine plus countries around the world. So just think about that. If you like these exclusive benefits, Go to crazyfinscott.com slash support for more information. I hope you will consider su- supporting me and Crazy Fin the Sky for years to come. Thank you f- for your generous support over the years. It means a lot to me. Thank you. This is a Crazy Fitness Guy Healthy Living podcast that promotes healthy living through autistic eyes. Please welcome your host Jimmy Clare who is a motivational speaker, autism advocate, author, and founder of crazyfitnessguy.com. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast so you will get notified of every new episode. Now let's get started. Today's podcast is presented by Pago. Pago, Pago is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space so you get so you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. Apply today to become a member and immediately be you connected with av- advertisers that fit your audience. That's Podgo at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. I've heard about Podgo through Podnews dot com and I've been using them for many months and I've earned quite a bit of money through um, um, using them and Crazy Fitness Guy Healthy Living Podcast. T- take a look at them at podgo.com. That is P O D G O dot C O. There are so many ads these days wherever you go. There are ads in movie theaters, on TV, on radio, and on billboards. So why would you want to listen to ads in a podcast? Subscribe to the Crazy Fitness Guy Premium Podcast to get these exclusive benefits. Listen ad-free. Behind-the-scenes access. Access to our free Facebook community. And so much more. 
Become a premium member for only $5 per month. To learn more about the Crazy Fitness Guy Premium Podcast, go to crazyfitnessguy.com slash healthy living podcast or click on the premium podcast link in the show notes. Now let's get back to the show. Thanks to our sponsor to make this podcast happen. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make podcasts. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listeners. It's everything you, you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, uh, it only takes about five to 10 minutes to set up. It's simple, easy, and the best part, it's free. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today to just create your own podcast. In this episode, I I talked to my friend Tom, who's a special education teacher assistant who talks about what's like for the schools that what's like with people who have autism to go to school. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I sure did talking to my friend Tom. And uh, if you have time, check out his website called uh, Pod Jerky. And his podcast also is also called Pod Jerky. Uh, he just reached just recently reached fifty thousand downloads. So check it out, and uh, hope you enjoy this episode. There we go. Yeah. So what what is it that you exactly want to do? Like, what challenges are you looking at? Like, from whose perspective? Probably just in general. Like when I um like when I was in uh, in special education. Uh, I, re- I remember there was some questionable classroom uh, where the classrooms were um, space is available. Like I remember um, one of the classrooms I was in, it was in, it was the only classroom down this one hallway that uh, it was next to the, uh, the bathrooms, but the whole, but the whole uh, hallway smells like, um, l- l- let's just say like, I know exactly well, what you're talking about. Yeah, well, it sounds usually... like a bathroom, but it smells all like sewage and everything. And it's like, yeah. and this is sanitary. <laughs> well, that's that's usually where the special education rooms are is in like the basement, and they're usually by a washroom. I I, I don't know if that's for emergencies, so that if they do have to use the washroom and they're not fully capable, like I've worked with students that. Um, can't use the washroom on their own. Um, so you have to like run them to the washroom. So maybe that's a reason why they're closer to the, to the washroom or it's because they want them out of the way of everybody else's classroom. Uh, I can't tell what, what the reasoning is because I don't set that up. I don't set up for the classrooms are. I, I definitely understand that. Like, uh, but that was like one of the ideas I came up with like, well, the location it always seems to be like an afterthought, and like and it wasn't just that scenario where I like we used to have when I was um, in middle school, we uh, like we upgraded from like a smallish kind of room, like, like say like medium size to like a very large size where we can actually move around in, and uh, and so and we got like. We got like prime time location. It was like it had like nice glass uh, uh, see through um, windows and everything, and it was like really cool. I got right next to the front office, the main office, and everything, so you get to see everyone who's coming and going. And uh, and it's like, but then what's funny? Uh, years later, when I came back to visit, uh, just out of curiosity, like visiting um, one of my teachers that made a big impact on my life. Uh, like she showed me her new room and it was the old janitor's closet and it had no window, no view. And I was like, 
Well, gee, you know, imagine if I was a parent bringing my, uh, like for parent teacher to conference and say, well, this seems like a broom closet. And some, and the teacher, like, how do they react? And say, well, that's the funny thing. It was. Yeah. See, I, I can tell you that it's, it's hard because I've worked in multiple schools. So it's been different at every school that I've worked at. Uh, the, the school that I'm currently at, we basically have our own section on a floor. So there are four classrooms, um, but one is kind of like a, just a closed in room. Uh, there's no windows. Uh, it's just a double door, like one door in and then one door to the next classroom over. Um, but it's it's different because that student had to be separated from the rest of the students because he was very physical. He was very violent. So um, he wouldn't be able to be in a general classroom. So I was with him with another adult in a, in a classroom by ourselves just for that reason, because the, the, the student was too physical for the rest of the class and he would hurt other students. So he had to be pulled into another classroom on his own. And then there's classrooms that are full of students uh, with special needs in this department. So, I mean, it's, it, it's totally different. And other schools, we would all be in one classroom. Um, and the classroom was okay. I mean, it wasn't the greatest classroom, um, but it suited the needs for the kids. Okay. Um, so in your opinion, what do you think would have to, uh, what, what do you think the challenges of special education uh, are? Or for are? workers? Yeah. So for, for myself, um, a lot of the challenges for us would be um, handling the violence, like the physical violence. Like I work in high school right now, so I get um, the, the bigger kids than elementary school kids. Uh, when I'm with the high school kids, it's um, a little tougher because I'm a male. There aren't a lot of male uh, education assistants. And what happens with the males is that they give us the bigger students because we're physically bigger and we can handle the uh, physical students a lot better, I guess, than the, than the women do. Um, not to say that the women can handle them, but at the same time, it's just, you know, the, the student I was working with for the past four years was bigger than I am. And I'm bigger than most of the females at my school. So, I mean, it just makes sense to put me with that student. Um, so that's a big challenge and challenge also is depending on what end of the spectrum they're on. Um, so you can be very high functioning or you could be very low on the spectrum. And the challenges there for us are to create a program for the student based on their needs. Um, so my student was unable to do uh, quite a few things. Um, he wasn't very verbal. He didn't want to write, like his writing was very, very sloppy. So we had to do different things to try and get him to do um, what we wanted him to do. And then the end goal was, I think at the end of the year, we just wanted him to be able to write down his name, his phone number, his address, and his parents' name in case he ever went out in public and, you know, was separated from his parents, he'd be able to tell somebody that. That makes sense. Uh, uh... Okay, I'm wondering if this blog post was a bad idea. <laughs> uh, crap. Uh, has there any, um, I'm think of the words, like what, um, do you think there's any, uh, um, do you think there's any uh, challenging parts for this uh, students in uh, special education today? Oh yeah, absolutely. They have, the, the, the issue I see in, in schools is that they get their, their workers get switched too much. So it, there's no consistency with their workers. Um, you will have, you know, one worker one day, another worker another day. Um, there's not enough staff to cover the uh, amount of students there are in the departments. So I think that consistency isn't there for um, kids that are on the spectrum and they need that repetitiveness, right? Um, I don't know how you are with that, but the, the repetitiveness for um, a lot of kids on the spectrum, um, they require that. So every day would be the same schedule. Uh, come in, go to your locker, come sit down at your desk and do some work, then go for a walk. And they, they, they know that routine every day. And if somebody different is working with them, they may not know that route. And then it gets pulled away from them and then they, you know, they start to get frustrated because they can't communicate that, you know, this is not what we do. Yeah, I definitely uh, can relate to that 100% uh, because back in high school, we, um, like back in high school, uh, 
in middle school when every time I had a one-on-one -on -one helper and um, when my helper was out because they were sick or she was sick or whoever was sick some I always got a, a substitute and it was like the worst possible thing I've had to deal with because uh, just some of them were like I mean not trying to like be rude or anything but they were kind of like they were definitely clueless at times and when I tried to fill them in uh, like some of them listened and some of them did not want to listen and it was like are you making this up and it's like uh I don't think I can make this whole scenario up <laughs> yeah it, it it's it's difficult because um like I said like the the consistency isn't there right it's it's tough especially with nonverbal kids um it, it's uh like they're so used to that routine every day and and it gets out of uh control sometimes and then you know one of the other challenges that you face is you don't know you know some of the parents don't want to communicate with um the, the workers so if i have a student and the parents don't communicate with you you don't know how the morning went or how the night went or like did they sleep well and um, so we find that a lot, like that happens a lot um, with some of the students that we work with, um, that the parents don't communicate that they had an off night or an off morning, and then they come into school and they're very, very amped up and, you know, all over the place. And we're trying to calm down the situation um, before it gets out of hand. And then, you know, there's physical violence that, that happens just because they're frustrated. And, and I understand, um, but at some points they have to go home um, because they're they're a danger or um, they may injure another student. So, you know, that, that's another challenge that we face with um, some of the students that we work with. And uh, what do you, uh, how many, uh, uh, do, you, do you think it also is a challenge uh, to the students that they can't, um, that some of them are not able to uh, uh, like sit still and they're kind of like, Oh, I need to get up and get the hell out of this place, and because uh, I know very big challenge. Yes, too. Yeah, very big challenge. Um, there's a lot of students that they just want to get up and be, you know, walking around or doing something physical. And you know, I've worked with students that will sit at their desk and do their work, and just you know, it just takes a little bit of extra time. But I've also worked with students that you know, you just say, okay, let's just get this one this one task done and then we'll do you know a walk or we'll go to the gym or we'll go you know wherever it is around the school to do something uh, in terms of physical activity but you know it, it, it that is a challenge yes absolutely and uh do you think that some of the uh do you think people on uh do you think the schools need to like rethink the locations of the special education classes. And so just like giving like a second thought and like uh, without like maybe like, okay, you know, we're just gonna put these people down all the way in the very, very bottom of the school with the rats or. I, I, somewhat, I somewhat agree and disagree with that because agree, yes, because they're always put in, in the basements, like from my uh, personal experience. Um, but I also agree because there are a lot of disruptions that happen, um, especially if you're working with high, high needs, um, like lower on the spectrum uh, students. Uh, we have a lot of those in our school um, that make a lot of noise, that scream, that are violent, that throw like chairs or tables or whatever it is. And I think they try to keep that away from the general population as to not distract um, the classes that are going on uh, and the learning that's going on. So they figure if we put them, you know, in the basement, there's still class, other classrooms in the basement, we're just in our own section. So like we have like four classrooms in part of the hallway. And then at the other end of the hallway, there's another four classrooms, but it's separated by um, a stairwell that goes up to the next floor. Um, so we're still in the same floor as other classrooms. It's just that we're separated in our own little section, just I guess so that the noise level doesn't happen. Like we had a lot of noise coming out of our classrooms. Uh, one of the other challenges, I think, is that some of the workers that that work with uh, special needs kids, and, and I say this very often, is that um, there's a lot of older um, people that are working in special needs right now. And when they were starting off in the job, um, it wasn't the same as it is today. 
and uh, there weren't as many tasks as there is today. And I guess the younger generation that's coming up and starting the jobs uh, for special education um, have gotten a little bit more training in certain situations and know how to deal with certain situations a little more than the older generation. And that's not a knock on the older generation at all, because they're still doing a fantastic job keeping up with um, all the current situations that are going on. It's just that they were so used to a certain way of doing things and then things progressively changed during the course of, you know, the past 20 years that they're still, you know, try their old ways, which may not work anymore. And uh, we find that to be a challenge sometimes too, because not everybody knows what to do. And I think generally as a school board, I think there should be more training for everybody um, and how to deal with certain situations. Makes sense. Uh, hmm. Just trying to think if I have any. Ask away, because you know what we're going to do? We're going to use this recording, both you and I, and we're going to put this into an episode. I'll edit it. I'll even edit it for you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, this will be good because this is a good, uh, good chat because you're going to get it into a blog and then I'll get you to record maybe like a little intro part to it and I'll record an intro part to it and I'll put one up for me and one up for you. Like we'll do one for you as well. So awesome. Uh, yeah. Um, like what are the challenges that you face that you see as a student? with um, the teacher, like as a, a, with an assistant or a teacher being in a classroom, in a special education classroom, what are some of the challenges that you see? Uh, when I was in special education back in, uh, I'm gonna say from a high school point of view, because uh, when I was in high school, uh, because middle school, I really liked, uh, I was in like one special education class for all my major subjects and everything. So I didn't have to go from one class to another class, only for my electives. But in high school, I had to jump from every single class. And I don't, I think it was totally bogus uh, that I had to do that. Uh, and I, I'm going to say one thing about the bogusness of that, uh, because there was this uh, hallway that they called the knuckle. And as you know, the hand has five knuckles. And so there were five hallways going to one hallway. And Today's podcast is presented by Pargo. Pargo. Pargo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast, providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space so you get so you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Pargo. Apply today to become a member and immediately be connected with ad advertisers that fit your audience. That's Podgo at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. I've heard about Podgo through podnews.com and I've been using them for many months and I've earned quite a bit of money through them and using them and Crazy Fitness Guy Healthy Living Podcast. To take a look at them at podgo.com. That is P O D G O dot C O. And it was packed. And there was no, if you got stuck in the, in the knuckle, you're late to the next class automatically. And the teacher, and some teachers, hated people being late. And it's like, it's not my fault. She's, and some teachers like tell me like, well, get here in time early. Well, how do I do that? <laughs> and then I started working with some of my, let's say more laid back kind of teachers. But I mean, they still like were hard, but they weren't like, okay, well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop being a ball buster to you. What, what these people, what, some, what the laid back teachers did, like they started letting me go, uh, out of class, like the last five minutes of class, because obviously they, they're just going over what's due for homework. And I have my teacher for homeroom, my history teacher for homeroom. And so if I missed the last five minutes, uh, and like I had study hall the next, uh, like the next period, so I could come right back to his uh, classroom and say, hey, uh, I need a clarification and whatnot. And so they saw let me, some of my teachers let me saw leave class early. But what I saw was my um, my English teacher, she was uh, in 12th grade. She, 
I think she kind of taught, I think, she, I, I think she was like there one too many years. And uh, I think she just, I think what worked for her years ago did not necessarily work for me. And she, she thought, every, I feel like she thought she could teach it. Every, she could have people learn at every single, um, at one level, like one size fits all. And it was totally annoying because like we were reading all these absurd books. Uh, like one of them was The Great Gats Gatsby. And, and I, I, I've heard of it, I never read it. I, I, I mean, I read it for a class, but I, I didn't even count it as a reading list for, uh, on my personal library on Goodreads because it's like, I don't even, like, I, I'm really good at memorizing, like, what I read in books and whatnot. I don't remember what the hell I read. <laughs> uh, it, it was all a blur, a blur. And I was just trying to think, like, uh, and, and, like, there was times where she, came, in my study hall class, I was done with all my homework assignments. And she walks by, and uh, she tell, she says to me, I was like, you're supposed to be working at study hall. I'm already finished. I was like, oh yeah, well, let me see. She sits down, she makes me uh, watch her. And there's one time, it was most annoying. She, uh, I can answer this one question on this uh, study guide that she was having us to fill out and everything. She's like, oh, that's in the book. It's in the book, really. That, that that's why I couldn't find it. And, and and so she made me watch her flip through every single page in the book, scanning each page. I think it was like a hundred plus page book or something. And uh, and at at the end of the study hall, she admits, "You're right. The question wasn't in the book." And I was like, "Gee, I'm right. Thank you. Thanks, Captain Obvious." And I probably shouldn't have been a smart ass to her. But she just kept on calling me lazy after lazy after lazy. And I was getting straight A's. Uh, if that makes me lazy, then let me try to get straight F's then. You know, I, 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 I kind of see that every day as well um, throughout the different schools that I've been in. Different adults treat the kids differently um, depending on who it is, who's working with who. Do you like Crazy Fitness Guy and want us to stay in business? Consider becoming a subscriber to Crazy Fitness Guy Premium Podcast. By becoming a Premium Podcast subscriber, you will be helping support our mission, which is to help educate people about autism and change their perspective so that they can look at it as a, a unique gift instead of a disease that needs to be cured. At Crazy Fitness Guy, there is only me, a.k.a. Jimmy Clare. I am what you call an indie podcaster, meaning there is no company backing Crazy Fitness Guy. So in other words, if I, so if I run out of money, there would be no more crazyfitnessguy.com. By becoming a premium podcast subscriber, you will get these exclusive benefits like ad-free content, so you do not have to listen to ads like this one anymore, behind-the-scenes access, you will get sneak peek previews of upcoming shows, and you will get early access to episodes before it's released worldwide. Crazy Fitness Guys Premium Podcast has been featured over nine plus countries around the world. So just think about that. If you like these exclusive benefits, go to crazyfitnessguy.com slash support for more information. I hope you will consider su supporting me and Crazy Fitness Guy for years to come. Thank you for your generous support over the years. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Are you stuck with di uh, and you don't know what to do for uh, dinner? Well, let me tell you about this awesome, amazing company called Eat Clean Bro. You get healthy recipes delivered right to your door. They're fresh. They're cooked for you, and all you have to do is heat it up in a microwave or oven. It's simple, quick and easy, affordable, and uh, there. And each meal is delicious. I've I found them through uh, through uh, Tiger Shulman's Karate, and I joined them and partnered with them because I think you will like them too, and I'm. 
absolutely love their meals. They're fresh, authentic, and it's all around great food that you normally think, oh gee, I think this would take hours to cook, but they already took out all the cooking for you. All you have to do is heat it up in the microwave. How simple is that? Or the stove, or, I mean, or the oven. So go check out uh, Eat Clean Bro in the links in the show notes for more information about them. The internet can be an, a distraction place. It, it's full of distractions like social media, shopping, and so many more websites that are very distracting, just like video games and whatnot. But it is all over the place. So much noise going on. Well, with a blocker tool like Freedom Blocker, it can block all those distraction websites that you find distracting. I block uh, RuneScape, Facebook, uh, Twitter and all the social media marketing tools without Freedom Blocker, I wouldn't be able to uh, run crazyfitnessguy.com because I'd be distracted all day long. But thanks to them, so uh, I'm no longer distracted. Go to visit the um, web link in the show notes for more information about Freedom Blocker, for more information about what they do, what they are, and whatnot and you can and the best part about freedom blocker you can use on it on all of your devices apple windows macs tablets and more visit them to find learn more information there'll be some people that will um, back talk to the kids there'll be some people that treat them like really really well there'll be some people that just don't want to pay attention they're just there for a paycheck like you see everything you see it all throughout um throughout the the whole education system uh it's no different than um in a in a normal classroom setting um you still have teachers that really 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 care um, you have teachers that don't care at all you have teachers that are just in the middle um i i see that that same thing throughout the education system no matter where you go did you find it hard um having different teachers every year and it was a different learning style for you um, there was different expectations put onto you. Um, I find um, that every time you get a different teacher, um, like in our, in our department, luckily it's the same three teachers that are there. Um, the classrooms usually stay the same year after year, uh, student-wise, um, because there's different levels um, of uh, the spectrum for each classroom. But do you find it hard if you have to go from teacher to teacher in what their expectations are for you personally? Um, yes and no. Um, it, there was times where some of the people I talked uh, that I went to, uh, that some of my teachers, uh, like one of the teachers I, I had to go to, uh, she, she told me I needed to do A, B, C, and D. And I did A, B, C, and D. But then other teachers told me, it's like, forget what A, B, C, and D is in this room. And you have to follow my rules on this way. I'm really, really confused. And like, uh, I don't know like how your school district does it, but uh, every semester I got a different case manager and there was some IEP uh, case managers that were really, really great on top of the ball. And there was other ones that just kind of did like the least work as possible. And I, I, I hated when I was at the age where I was able to go to my own IEP meetings. As I had to sit there and listen to it. everyone says, you know what, I think this will benefit Jimmy. And then it's like, and the other side argues like, no, no, th this is not going to be well for Jimmy. I'm at the other end of the table. I mean, like at the very end of the table, like the head of the table. And it's like, well, Jimmy is sitting right here. And I think you're all a bunch of morons. I mean, I did not say any of that, but. Yeah, see, see, it's different because you, you understood and could communicate with with uh, the, the people that were in on the IEPs. And, you know, we have students that don't understand and, and people talk in front of them like they don't understand. But, you know, in my head, I still feel like they understand. They just can't communicate back, you know, what they want to say. Whereas you understood and they were still saying these things in front of you, saying that, you know, this is what's going to benefit Jimmy. Only Jimmy knows what's going to benefit Jimmy. Jimmy knows how to work at his own pace. And you know how you're going to be able to do things at a certain tempo, pace, whatever it is you know how that's going to get completed. 
they're they're just putting expectations on you because they want it done the way that they want it done. Exactly. And like when they were uh and and during those meetings, I was not allowed to say anything. I was just sitting there minding my own business. And I was like, can I go back to class and be bored there? Uh and some of the some of the the classes that they that that meeting interrupted, uh some of them I liked and then there's some of them I absolutely hated. But uh, one of the times when they were having the meetings was right in the middle of my art class. And it's like, you pull me out of my art class, I'd rather be getting back in art. And it's like, it's more fun. But then there was times where it got me out of uh, my English teacher's class. And it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she absolutely hated those meetings. And, yeah. and I and I loved it when I could see her that just look in her face and say, I hate being here. I could be here anywhere here. And I was like, well, if I'm stuck here, you're stuck with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I see. I understand they book IEP meetings. They have so many of them to do throughout the day or throughout the week or whatever time frame that they have it set up for. I understand that they have a lot of them to do and they have to pull you out at certain times. But you, you generally want to keep the students in the classes that they enjoy more because it stimulates their brain activity. It stimulates, you know, their their uh, enjoyment in the program that you're in. Um, whereas the ones that they're not totally engaged in, um, yes, they're going to have a little bit of trouble maybe if they miss a class, but they can always get help after any class, just like any student in the school can. Um, but if they're not engaged in that class, they're still not retaining any of the information and it's no good for them anyway, right? Mm -hmm. And I also have to bring up, it's like, you know, like what can make those IEP meetings more meaningful? Like, my uh, my mentor who's been uh, helping me like finding different conferences and everything and uh, and it's not like all up to her. There are so many ads these days wherever you go. There are ads in movie theaters, on TV, on radio, and on billboards. So why would you want to listen to ads in a podcast? Subscribe to the Crazy Fitness Guy Premium Podcast to get these exclusive benefits. Listen ad-free. Behind-the-scenes access. Access to our free Facebook community. And so much more. Become a premium member for only $5 per month. To learn more about the Crazy Fitness Guy Premium Podcast, go to crazyfitnessguy.com slash healthy living podcast or click on the premium podcast link in the show notes. Now let's get back to the show. conference like uh and after finds different conferences it's two that i could apply for but then, like she, she has these uh she has contacts that she passed along to me and whatnot and uh her point like uh one of the school districts that she uh worked with made their uh kids go to their own iep meetings and actually talked in their own iep meetings and uh, what and was asking and like telling them telling the grown-ups what they need and uh and i thought that was kind of cool way and it's like now if only my now if only uh colleges and school districts uh, get their heads out of their clouds they could start seeing because like for instance um accommodations for college uh and i don't know if it's everywhere in, in every college but uh like the colleges, like okay, one of the accommodations I could get is a note taking. However, that's only benefits me if someone wants to be willing to be a note taker. If no one wants to be a note taker, technically I don't get accommodation that accommodation. So I'm just like, this is an accommodation, and it's like you guys don't even like try it. the teacher. The teacher, all the teacher has to do is like, I, and I'm not like blaming teachers or anything in college, but it's like. The accent's like, well, we have someone in this class that has an accommodation for note taking. Would anybody be interested in, in it? And no one ever says. I, I never heard one person has said yes yet. And uh, and I think it's I think it's totally dumb that to kind of accommodation at, because you're kind of like setting people up to fail uh, because. Like, okay, if somebody doesn't want to be a note taker, you don't get that accommodation. Well, that was your only accommodation. And so you, you don't get it. 
That yeah. sounds, seems fair. We have technology. How about you let me have a um, use a Zoom and record the whole classroom and I can uh, listen to my notes. I was like, well, uh, and of course the, the state laws that stay, well, you have to um, ask to uh, record people and everything. Have you put that in accommodations? Just let me record. I was like, yeah. I don't ask anybody that way. There you go. Yeah, well, I don't know. Absolutely. That. Again, I'm not a lawyer or anything. Uh, yeah, the accommodations are a hard part of it as well. Um, they can accommodate everything um, that they put into the IEPs and and uh, any of the like the testing that they do. They try to do as best they can, but there, there's been a few things that I've noticed throughout the years. I mean, uh, I don't have any specific examples offhand, but I mean, throughout the years that I've been with certain uh, grade students, like I've, I've worked right from kindergarten all the way up until, you know, the kids have been 21 years old. Uh, so I've seen a lot of the uh, different accommodations that were set. And then you sit there and you think about it and say like, okay, you know what, like this student might be colorblind, like this student does not know how to hold a pencil and they're not able to write, like, there's got to be something else. And, and they will say that exact thing. Well, that's not in their accommodation. So we got to get them to do it themselves. And I'm like, I'm fully aware that we need to get them to do it themselves, but until we can get them to that point, there's got to be an accommodation for them to, to make it up until that point. And, you know, so I, I've seen a lot of that throughout the years. And I kind of think it's kind of weird is that like some of the accommodation, other accommodations, like uh, for instance, um, like if you need assisting technology, uh, they have to go through hoops and it may or may not happen. And I, I just I just got kind of thinking, it's like, but well, we have, it's like you guys have a boat, like a huge tech department and, and with the latest, you guys, well, you guys say on the on websites and everything, we have the latest technology. Well, how about you start investing in some technology to get assisted technology because you want, well, gee, guess what? If you're accommodating more people, who have extra challenges equals more money for you guys. Cha-ching. Yeah. See, I, I noticed like um, a couple of times that I've worked with students that they were, they're nonverbal, but they were able to do um, at least like one or two word strings together. And, you know, they would, we would have teams come in and they would tell us, you know, they need to use the iPad to ask to go to the washroom. So they would have a program set up where they would touch the button and it would say, uh, washroom and I refused to use it and they told me no 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 you need to use it and I'm like no but the student can say I need to use the washroom why am I letting them use the iPad to do it for them when they can say it themselves and they'll say well that's because that's what's in their IEP we need them to use it they're using it at home we want them to transfer it and use it at school I'm like but this kid knows how to communicate that they need to use the washroom why are we using it so when they left and not to knock them or anything, because I know they're doing their job, but when they left, I wouldn't do it because I wanted to encourage the verbal aspect of it if they were able to do it. It's no different than them saying to me, you know what, I can speak in sentences, but you know what, we did like some tests on you and we want you to use the iPad. Like there's no, there's no reason for it if they're able to communicate that verbally. That's kind of like, uh, I have uh... I heard, I don't know if the saying, uh, if the saying, uh, if you don't use it, you will lose it will apply here, but I like the saying very much because uh, I think it's kind of true. If you don't use your voice, who knows, do you lose it? I don't know. Uh, I don't want to find out. Well, um, not that you're going to lose it, but you may lose certain tools um, that you would have in, in your verbal aspect of it. You would lose uh, maybe some of your vocabulary or forget certain things that you used to be able to see. And especially those that were lower on the spectrum, right? They, they may forget what they were trying to say, and then it doesn't come out the way they want it to come out anymore because they were being trained so much on the iPad or technology to do it for them. Uh, we have a student at our school that is verbal, but won't talk at school. And, you know, there's, there's no, um, I guess, reinforcement for him to speak verbally. They let him use the iPad and it's, it, it boggles my mind because we know at home he speaks, but at school he won't do it. So, you know, you got to use different tactics in, in terms of um, getting communication, I guess, uh, together with uh, the students and the parents and 
you know, the school system and, and everything together so that these kids can succeed as best as possible and be able to get out into the world after they turn 21 and they're done school, um, that they're able to succeed out in the, the, uh, the world if, if they're going to have a, a job after or if they're going to go to day camps after or if they're going to just, you know, stay at home. Uh, you still want what's best for them at the end of the day. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> I, I just think that sometimes the, sometimes I feel like the IEPs work not always in your best interest. Yeah. And like it can work against you. Like, uh, like I said, like the note taking or uh, like now I can actually, like when I was going into college in person, uh, I'm able to use my computers to uh, uh, take notes on. And sometimes I just press record on my computer just to, uh, and like, I don't, I'm, I'm not a person to sell uh, uh, notes or anything. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not that kind of person. And so yeah. uh, I just save my notes so I can go back to listen because <clears throat> sometimes like, even though I'm paying attention, there's just a lot of information to for me to uh, retain. And then if I don't retain it, I'm like, okay, crap, what did the teacher say? What did the teacher say? Nope, yep. I have no idea what the teacher said. <laughs> yeah, I, I think a, a, a lot of, um, I guess, special needs departments are also hampered by curriculum. So like a lot of the times you don't want to stray away from the everyday routine, uh, like you're, you're still doing your math, you're still doing your English, you're still doing your writing, you're still doing whatever, whatever courses it is, depending on the level that the students are at. And, and I like to have fun with the students. And, you know, I used to sing and dance before COVID with uh, some of the students. And this year, um, because things are opening back up, and we may be allowed to like congregate with classes again, um, I, I want to start a podcast with some of the, the students uh, in the special needs department and get them to tell stories of their everyday lives or maybe be able to interview and try and build some of those communication skills with them that way uh, and then just put it out there and, you know, and, and that's something for them to look forward to. So, you know, there's, there's other things that you can do in departments that aren't necessarily school curriculum that will actually help benefit the students outside of school when they're done. Because, you know, in, in the department that I'm in, um, there aren't a lot of high functioning kids. So at the end of their school tenure, I don't think that they're going to go out and get like an office job or um, uh, like, you know, some like high executive job or anything like that. Not to say that they can't because, you know, they're, they're they can do anything that they want. But at the end of the day, um, they, uh, Hold on one sec, sorry. But there's further ones in there. Yeah. For just me? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry. Um, I, I lost where I was there. I've been so all of us. Yeah. No, uh, I think um like doing things differently with with the kids, um, it just it allows them to actually look forward to something. And then they may choose this type of communication inside of the school. Like, like I was saying, our, our kids, um, some of them are, are low functioning kids and they, and they won't be having like, you know, regular jobs when they finish school. So, you know, if this gives them something to look forward to, or they get to interview, you know, maybe a celebrity that they, they really, really want to talk to, or um, being able to just improve on their communication skills. Um, and then you kind of, say, you know what, do you want to do video where, you know, you can uh, learn the, the eye contact portion of it. And, you know, they're, they're just, just different verbal communications or verbal cues and, and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I think it would be really, really interesting um, if they let me go ahead and do uh, what I have planned to do. That would be awesome because I know, uh, like, I'm, some of the electives I got to do in uh, high school, one of um, one of them was uh, this TV slash movie class, and there was actually like a kind of a TV set in the uh, classroom, and so people got to actually work, the students got to work the lights, cameras, and actually got to be behind the desk, and that's how they did the, uh, uh, I guess you'd call it like um, morning uh, introductions and the Pledge of Allegiance and and whatnot and so and they actually did the weather and even though that they got it like wrong like 100 percent of the time but 
yeah. I mean, that, that's science for you, but. Uh, but, but you know what, it, and, it, and you know, I can also teach them, you know, how to edit. And, you know, there, there's different things that they can do on the computer behind the scenes if they don't really want to be a voice on the microphone or a face on the camera. There's different things that they can do behind the scenes that they may be able to do when they leave high school because you know what we didn't know that they had those skills on the computer because we don't give them that opportunity because we want them to be you know at their desk and writing and and doing this and doing that and you know if we give them that opportunity maybe they excel at that and they just can't communicate with us to say hey this is uh, this is something i want to do but we have no idea that that's what they want to do so i'm going to try and bring that forward and see if that's something that we can work on and see if that's something the kids would enjoy. I know there's a few kids that would love to do it um, because they aren't shy on a microphone at all because they would get on a microphone and sing in the classroom. So I don't think they would be shy at all to do it. And especially if they're with me, um, they trust me. So uh, I would actually be on with them and, and help them and guide them along the way and, and let them run the show. But I mean, I'd be there just in case that they had any uh, issues or any like you know dead space that they they didn't feel comfortable talking that would be awesome like I remember like even in the movie class we got to learn like uh, we were watching the movie Twilight uh, obviously it was not my most favorite movie that we watched but my teacher actually pointed out scenes that no one else would have like picked up on but she's like uh, see how this person was running and she like played it in slow-mo I was like it's like that's fake it's all edited to make it look so real and, and it's like that's cool and, and like she had this like special kind of program on the computer it's like stop and it's like and, and she's like she should be dragged along and it's like see it's like not even touching the ground not even and it's like i was like i want this program <laughs> yeah she wouldn't even yeah. tell me what it was yeah it's it, it, it's going to be interesting it's uh i'm hoping that we can do something like that this year uh, I think it'll make it fun for the students. I think it'll give them a different uh, outlook on certain things. Uh, the teachers might enjoy it because it might give them a little bit of a break um, from working with the students and we can do different programming with them. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Hopefully uh, the kids will, you know, take to it and uh, enjoy doing it. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, like my mom always says, nothing venture, nothing gain. <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. You don't give it a try. You never know, right? Yeah, that's, that's been going off over my head for the last four years of running Crazy Fitness Guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all right. Well, I think you got a lot there. Like, I mean, you can turn this into a blog. If you want to send me the recording, just email it to me. Definitely. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll edit it up nice. I don't know how long it's going to take me. Hopefully I can get it done this week. And then... Uh, well, I'm just going to uh, use it for notes on my end for the blog post. Uh, as yeah. Yeah, and I'll turn it into an episode, no problem. Like it'll, uh, we got some good conversation in there and some good uh, insight. Definitely. There are so many ads these days wherever you go. There are ads in movie theaters, on TV, on radio, and on billboards. So why would you want to listen to ads in a podcast? Subscribe to the Crazy Fitness Guy Premium Podcast to get these exclusive benefits. Listen ad free. Behind the scenes access, access to our free Facebook community, and so much more. Become a premium member for only $5 per month. To learn more about the Crazy Fitness Guy Premium Podcast, go to crazyfitnessguy.com slash healthy living podcast or click on the premium podcast link in the show notes. Now let's get back to the show. for tuning into another episode of crazy fitness guy healthy living podcast if you have enjoyed this episode please leave us a review on apple podcasts google podcasts or in your favorite podcast app make sure you subscribe to our podcast to get notified of new episodes in the meantime visit crazyfitnessguy.com and read the latest blog post while you wait for the next brand new episode hope to see you here again